It all began in a cold, dark shed in the middle of the night. It was nearly 3 a.m. when the man put the finishing touches on a machine he believed would change the world. Every bolt had been planned and replanned in his mind for months. Every last detail had been considered and reconsidered, except for one, the most important one. For months, as the individual pieces were brought into the small brick barn behind his rented home, the man who would indeed change the world forgot that the whole was greater than the sum of its parts, literally. For when Henry Ford was finally ready to test his machine, it was too big to get through the doors of his shed. In a fashion typical to Americans, who since the earliest days have been defined by a certain brash, impatient character, Henry Ford grabbed a sledgehammer and beat the walls down to get his soon-to-be-famous device on the road. The next morning, his landlord was enraged at the damage until he saw the quadricycle. Indeed, in that one moment of invention and exuberance, one can come to understand a broader truth that has been the hallmark of the American character for generations. We are a nation of dreamers and doers, a nation of bravado and delivery, a nation defined by a can-do spirit that has at once inspired and confounded the rest of the world. Throughout the 100 plus years of the Ford Motor Company, and indeed the American automobile industry, we can read many storylines that point to the essence of what America is all about. One can find all the drama and excitement, all the triumph and success that have made us who we are today. This is the story not just of an American company, but rather it is the story of an institution that continues to redefine the world in the 21st century. It's a story of grit and guts, passion and perseverance, innovation and imagination, and that uniquely American entrepreneurial spirit born in its remarkable founder and alive today in the new pioneers that are recrafting the wheels of the world in the most complex and competitive industry on Earth. This is the story of Ford, the man, the company, and importantly, a band of revolutionaries that are betting it all, defying all the odds, and in doing so, are not only leading an historic, proud, and critically important American industry through unprecedented economic turmoil, but are re-establishing American automotive leadership and reinventing the world's automobiles for the 21st century. I want to be part of the team that can look back and when I retire someday and say, you know what, we helped uh, polish the oval and restore Ford Motor Company to its rightful place atop the American road. So we really made a, a blood pact, if you will, that says we want to be best in quality, we want to be consistent, we want to make sure that we start every meeting with, you know, how are we doing in quality. And I think that the one thing that will separate the winners from the losers is how well you execute and how well you stay focused on the customer. And that's exactly what's happening at the Ford Motor Company. What they see is the bottom is behind them. They have a vision and a hope for the future that extends well beyond the current time, and that's why they're being so successful in doing what they're doing. Ford is in a whole nother game because they have the outside guy, and he came in like a freight train from Kansas, like the Sunshine Express. When he walked in the door, he knew where he was going and he took everyone with him. And it is absolutely infectious. Uh, this is a very uh, exciting time for Ford and everybody associated with Ford because of the success we're having implementing this new compelling vision for Ford. You know, of, of one Ford, uh, a complete family of vehicles, cars, utilities and trucks, small, medium and large, being best in class and quality, fuel efficiency, safety, and the very best value. It is an exciting time for everybody. They know they're associated with a company that's making the finest cars and trucks in the world right now.
What we have is an absolute depression in the auto business, a revenue shortfall that fell on top of the problems that we had with energy, and so that is the ultimate perfect storm in this business. If you look just at the last couple of years, you see some amazing events. For example, a year and a half ago when we had this dramatic run-up in energy prices, that caused a very rapid shift in the customer base, uh, which was tough on the industry uh, because all of a sudden people wanted uh, small cars. Uh, six months later and six months before, they didn't, and I don't care how good an industry is, how agile or flexible it is, it, it just couldn't change as quickly as the market changed. When they say, well, this is an industry that's in a serious recession, this is not a recession. Uh, this industry would be just fine, we would not have had bankruptcies had this been a recession. In fact, it's a revenue problem caused by uh, a roughly depression level of sales in this business, which is about four million units annually, below what we would think of as a normal recession. It's hard to point to a specific date when the storm began. Gathering clouds over the last decade signaled trouble on the horizon that could ultimately reshape the entire automobile industry. But few could predict just how destructive the perfect storm would be to automakers around the world, and especially those here in the United States. The economic hurricane left in its wake sales of automobiles at levels not seen since the Great Depression, and the overall economy in shambles. It is no surprise that the automobile industry was affected so severely by the economic whirlwind at the close of the first decade in the 21st century, because it is arguably the most complex and market-sensitive business in the world. The complexity starts with the product itself. Thousands of parts and sophisticated electronic and mechanical systems that have to start every time and work perfectly together day in and day out, not standing still like a washing machine, but constantly in motion at different speeds over different kinds of road in all kinds of weather conditions. Add to that an array of models, styles, and equipment that have to meet the specific needs of consumers of every lifestyle and life stage needs and desires that are in a constant state of flux based on the trends of the time. To respond to those changing needs and shifting trends in the marketplace with products that are heavily capital intensive, requiring long development times, has been and remains one of the most difficult business challenges any corporation must face. Add to this the fact that the automobile industry is perhaps more vulnerable to the ups and downs of economic cycles than any other industry in the market. But normal market swings are one thing. The most recent worldwide economic disaster is quite another. I sat in this office uh, a few months ago with the head of MIDI's. This is the Ministry of Industry and Trade's automotive division. And he made an interesting comment. He said that every industrialized country in the world understand the, the role that manufacturing plays at the policy levels, uh, with one exception, and that's us here in the United States. Uh, we understand finance, we understand tech, we understand agriculture, but we really didn't understand the role that manufacturing plays in our economy, and, and the role is significant, and one of the reasons that the government has come to the automotive catastrophe is a very simple one, because of the high multiplier in this industry, the significance, the scale of this industry, this industry, if it were to collapse, uh, this could have taken what is now a depression in auto and escalated that into a depression in the entire economy. As the gathering storm set in on the world's automobile industry, no manufacturer, European, Asian, or American, escaped its devastating impact. But one company, an American company, began to quietly emerge on the world stage as a beacon of light in what appeared to be an ever-darkening horizon. 
Through dynamic leadership and a renewed dedication to building the best cars in the world, the Ford Motor Company was prepared to embrace the new economic realities as an opportunity to reinvent itself and its products for the 21st century. The men and women of Ford thus embarked on a mission to save one of our nation's great institutions. And today, that company stands on the brink of one of the most dynamic turnarounds in American history. Worst of times, the worst of times worldwide, what we're here today is to celebrate, celebrate a plan to profitably grow Ford. Ford had kind of a near-death experience a few years ago, and as a part of that, when credit was available, they got a line of credit that said uh, bad things could happen, give us a line of credit, and the story goes they even pledged the Ford Blue Oval as a part of that. But as it turned out, there was tremendous foresight in that, and that is really what has brought Ford through this period without bankruptcy, and I think created a platform for great future success for the entire industry, and particularly for the Ford Motor Company. Well, one of the things that I feel best about uh, going into this last downturn is that we did protect our investment for the future. Many companies didn't as they saw this economic dislocation coming, and they cut back their R&D, they cut back their engineering, they cut back their investment in the future. We didn't. We kept investing in all the new technologies that we thought were going to come to fruition, and in fact, now they are coming. And it, I think it positions Ford very well. And so. Not that we needed a reminder, but it certainly is a reminder of the importance of investing in the future, even in the grimmest of times. The Ford Motor Company was not only prepared for the financial impact of a global recession, they had a plan in place that included both the restructuring of its worldwide enterprise for the 21st century and the rollout of the most extensive and revolutionary new product plan in its history. It was a great convergence at Ford, the skilled direction and focus of a new leader, the vision of the leader that bears the company's name the commitment and loyalty of workers around the world, and importantly, the can-do heritage and tradition of an institution deeply embedded into the fabric of America, which, for over a century, has weathered every storm, responded to every challenge, and been at the forefront of invention and innovation. It has been said that it is impossible to understand the 20th century or even where we are at the dawn of the 21st without understanding the Ford Motor Company. For over a century, the fingerprints of Ford have been everywhere and touched every aspect of our society, improving lives, connecting people, defending America, spurring innovation, and reshaping our culture from the way we enjoy ourselves to the music we listen to. It has been called the quintessential American company a company imbued with the spirit, imagination, and vision of its founder. Henry Ford was a doer, not a dreamer. Whereas people sit in their offices and think about things to do, he'd get up and do them. He loved going out on the factory floor. And when we became the empire we became, he got in his car or got on a train and went and visited places that were making things for him, or even his competitors. He liked seeing things, and he believed, he really believed in hands-on. In 1908, Henry Ford introduced the car that put the world on wheels, the legendary Model T. But back then, it took a crew around 12 hours to assemble each one. Henry knew that if he was to fulfill his dream of making cars affordable for everyone, he'd have to find a way to make a high-quality, reliable car more efficiently and faster than ever before. At the same time, his driving passion was to use technology 
to reduce the heavy physical demands on his workers. So he came up with a revolutionary concept. Instead of making the men move to the work, he moved the work to the men. His invention of the moving assembly line reshaped manufacturing worldwide and perhaps more than any other factor defined the 20th century and all the growth that would follow. He hadn't only changed the way great products were made, he changed the lives of the people who made them. In 1914, Henry Ford stunned the world again by doubling the wages of his assembly workers to an unheard of $5 a day. Tens of thousands of people from across the nation and around the world came to work for Ford and for the first time could afford the very vehicles they made. Overnight, a new American middle class was created. Henry Ford dreamed of building the ultimate factory, a factory that never waited for parts, that never slowed for lack of steel shipments or glass. He dreamed of a factory that using basic raw materials would create everything it needed on site. Thus, from an empty field along a nondescript river, the mighty Rouge was born. By the late 1920s, it was in full production. Coal, iron ore, limestone, lumber, and a hundred other raw materials arrived daily. 24 hours later, they were engine blocks, wheel rims, and radiator grills. 72 hours later, they were automobiles. The Rouge was more than a factory of bricks and steel. A mile and a half long and three quarters of a mile wide, with a staff of over 100,000, the plant worked like a single, complex, well-oiled machine, an industrial miracle, immortalized by artists, captured by photographers, and studied by industrialists to this day. It would, in time, become a critical part of the Ford legacy of constant improvement and reinvention and harnessing the power of industry to improve the lives of ordinary people. During World War II, from 1942 to 1945, it was the Ford Motor Company that completely shut down civilian vehicle production to dedicate all its resources to the Allied war effort. The arsenal of democracy was born, with Ford at the very epicenter. By the end of the war, the industrial might of Ford and tens of thousands of skilled UAW Ford auto workers were producing 80% of the B-24 Liberator bombers, one every hour, as well as aircraft engines, tanks, and a host of war materials. And throughout the last half of the 20th century, the company continued to affect virtually every aspect of American society and culture. From the space program and the building of the Mission Control Center in Houston, to a wide variety of sophisticated mission-critical defense and aerospace systems, to the very things that affect our everyday lives, our highways and interstate system, television programming and advertising, the electronics and appliances in our homes, the eight-hour workday, and Sunday drives and picnics. A new popular culture was born. It's even been reported that some of the greatest popular music of all time was inspired by the rhythms of the machines at Ford's mighty Rouge plant. Television exploded onto the scene through automobile advertising. But most of all, the decades following the post-war era were defined by the American road and our love of the automobile. It represented freedom in its purest sense and the height of American style and enthusiasm. And even today, people around the country share collective memories of the most iconic cars of all time. The years of the famed Lincoln Continental, Ford Thunderbird, the F-Series trucks, and, of course, the Mustang.
As the Ford Motor Company emerges from the unprecedented trials of the last decade, it does so as a leaner, more efficient, redesigned global enterprise. Gone are the days of expansive bureaucracies that literally spanned the world. At the point of the spear is what's known as the One Ford Plan. When Alan Mulally joined the Ford Motor Company in September 2006, Ford was an organization with responsibilities spread out and duplicated across the world. The decentralized structure led to tremendous inefficiencies, both in terms of business operations and in terms of bringing the very best products to market. It was time for a serious refocusing on their core automobile business. Well, when Ford uh, really captures the essence of uh, where we've been at Ford, but also uh, where we're going. Because Henry Ford, when he created Ford, uh, he was really focused on a focused uh, uh, Ford itself around the world. Although he had operations around the world, they all were one Ford. And over the years, you know, we acquired a lot of different brands. Uh, we moved away from the Ford Lincoln Mercury brands themselves. You know, Aston Martin, Jaguar, Land Rover, you know, Mazda, Volvo. So the one Ford is really our vision going forward of getting back to the original vision of focusing on Ford Lincoln Mercury and pulling everybody together around the world so we could leverage these fabulous assets and intellectual capital around the world to deliver the very best cars and the trucks under the Ford Lincoln Mercury brand. Bringing the massive company under the one Ford banner was merely the first step of an overarching strategy that has reinvented the way Ford operates. The next step was to examine exactly what it is that the customers of today and tomorrow are looking for, and to redirect all efforts toward fulfilling those needs. Ford recognized that people are looking for strong, distinct products and brands they can relate to, exciting designs, vehicles that have world-class quality and reliability, products that are fuel efficient and environmentally responsible, and, of course, products that represent real value. The entire company became focused around these new consumer priorities. When we pulled together around our One Ford plan, the most important thing I think that we all did together was develop a point of view about the future. And, and what, where was the market going? Uh, where were the consumers going? What would we all uh, really appreciate and value in our purchase decision? And all of our analysis and all of our work and all of our conversations led to the fact that, that we all, we all, worldwide, really care about quality of the vehicles that we buy. We want them to be reliable, highest quality. The second thing is we expect that they are the most fuel efficient vehicles in the world because we care about the environment, we care about sustainability. So are they the most fuel efficient? The next one was safety. This is about safe and efficient transportation. This is our, these are our families. And of course, we also care about smart, cool design and the very best value. And so we uh, led the transformation of Ford by focusing on the market and the customers and driving that into everything we do to produce the best cars and trucks that deliver on that brand promise. To further its efforts in reaching out to the American car buyer of today with credibility and authenticity, the new Ford team has forged a remarkable and unprecedented partnership with its 4,000 Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers throughout America, many of whom have been in the Ford family for generations. They are the face of the Ford Motor Company, its brands and its vehicles in cities and towns across the country. And with a renewed sense of purpose, the men and women in these dealerships are reaching out to car and truck buyers, young and old, with the products and services that are defining this new American road. Our relationship and our partnership with the dealers is absolutely probably the most important part of our, our business plan going forward. Our dealers are the face of Ford. It's a true partnership that we have with Ford Motor Company, and I, I can say this going back to 15 years that I've been here and been a dealer, we have never had a better relationship than we currently do, even though the times are a little bit tumultuous right now. And that goes back to having the right product, the right time, with the right technology that allows both of us to go forward. Because they can't be successful without us, and we can't be successful without them. I think our partnership with Ford, I've been a dealer for 27 years, and I've never felt the partnership as strong as it is right now. And that has a lot to do with the CEO, Al Malali, and, and bringing in his former management 
and keeping in touch with the dealers, they listen to the dealers. They want to know what's happening with the dealers. They want to have our input. At Toyota, I had great dealers. But the Ford dealer's been in business for 75 or 100 years. I went to the 100th anniversary of a dealer this year in Minnesota. Now, talk about a fundamental relationship with your community. I work for a company where our dealers are so integrated in their community, they are part of the fabric of that town. And when they represent your product, they're not just selling things. They're their reputation's on the line. Their family name is on the line. And now they get to sell a product that has world-class quality, fuel economy, and they have customers come in saying, thank you, I am so glad I bought a Ford. The remarkable array of Ford and Lincoln Mercury models being introduced today and over the months ahead reflect an extraordinary technological revolution that has quietly taken place in the research and development design and engineering laboratories at Ford. Technology that redefines the driving experience and elevates the bond between man and machine to a whole new level. We have to remember that this business is about making cars. It's about nothing else. You make one, one good car, then you make another good car, then you make another good car, and pretty soon the word gets out. As the Lincoln designers began their quest to develop the new Lincoln MKS and MKT, they searched to find the building blocks that formed the core of the storied Lincoln name. With almost scientific precision, they rediscovered the Lincoln DNA, and in doing so, created a marvel in design and a showcase of technology that would become a hallmark of Ford's product revolution. So the MKS is where we started to really define what Lincoln DNA was going forward. For me, Lincoln is first and foremost about understated elegance. In talking about the Lincoln DNA, uh, uh, obviously we have the bow wave grill, which is going to be our signature for a long time, I, I hope forever. Uh, and that came from the 1939 Continental. Um, and that doesn't mean to say that we are going to replicate the old design. It was an inspiration for us and we realized that bow wave look, that split grill, we could build that into something very modern and, and have a, a very unique uh, and very strong Lincoln face, which is extremely important in a car. Uh, another real important part of, of Lincoln's is they've always been extremely clean. Uh, the body sides are super clean surfaces, nothing outlandish about them. If you think about the 61 Continental, sort of what we call the JFK Continental, it was, it was all about that that time. And they were always extremely sophisticated designs. Lincolns at their best were extremely sophisticated design. And sophistication is understatement in a lot of cases. Those seats are like a Chanel handbag. I mean, they are, they are absolutely beautiful. Not only do they feel really good but when you look at them you just feel like really smart about buying this car you're looking at this beautifully perforated leather and this gorgeousness you look at the patterning simple simple stuff you know it everybody has the same material for the dash the patterning of the dash the graining first of all you know it looks like you know, some kind of Louis Vuitton bag patterning. It just shows that there was some attention paid to the details, the mix of materials. There's a fashion designer working on those interiors, clearly a fashion designer. On the MKT, we wanted to do something else a little special. We wanted it to be extremely dramatic on the road. Uh, we wanted it to be even more expressive than, than the S. We wanted to take a little bit more chances with it. We wanted it to be, when you saw it on the road, that there was no way that you could not notice this vehicle. There's nothing like it on the road and it really stands out. So uh, I think the drama 
that we built into the vehicle is really showing and shining. The interior, without a doubt, the best interior we've ever done. I mean, the fit and finish, the materials, uh, the cluster. Uh, we have some bronze finishes, uh, olive ash wood. Uh, it's just the most beautiful materials and the best materials anywhere in the world. This interior could hold its own against any luxury car in the world. Beneath the quiet elegance are cars that are powered by a true breakthrough in engine technology. The remarkable new EcoBoost engine, a twin turbocharged direct injection V6 engine that provides better fuel economy yet delivers V8 power and performance. EcoBoost is really the foundation for our sustainability strategy going forward. EcoBoost is forming the foundation for how we are going to deliver class-leading fuel economy in numerous products globally. So we deliver substantial performance feel, better than really the competition because the turbocharger gives you fantastic um, torque. And but we do that with V6 fuel economy versus the V8 fuel economy that the um, competitors are offering. So it provides the customer with what I think is an extremely easy choice. You can have better fuel economy and better performance, which is definitely the kind of decision I like to make. Automobile Magazine with Motor Trend um, just did a test for, for Lincoln, and it was strictly an engine exercise. The V6 engine versus a V8, a car that cost at least $20,000 less than the European competition. The fact that Lincoln, Lincoln had the nerve and the confidence to pit their cars against luxury European vehicles. That alone says something. If they came in last, I think it would be significant that they let us do this with absolutely no guarantees. This is exciting to us. This EcoBoost engine itself is exciting because it's a new technology that gives us as enthusiasts what we like, more performance, and it gives everyone what they need, which is better fuel economy and better emissions. So we did this test against the European V8s, and we went to Loveland Pass in Colorado, which is where they test, and where the air gets thin, you know, performance dies, and we ran these cars up the mountain, and the EcoBoost didn't win. It didn't win, but it came in second, less than a second behind the BMW. It beat a Mercedes, it beat a Jag, it beat a Maserati. In addition to all new engine technology, Ford engineers developed an array of intelligent systems that sense virtually every aspect of the driving experience. Systems that inform, entertain, protect, and connect the driver to the world like never before. We've had some exquisitely important designs within Ford Motor Company. Obviously, the Model T and the Model A were important. But for me, the 49 Ford was the birth of the modern car. It was a breakthrough in its day. The Lincoln Mark II was one of the most beautiful cars ever done. And that was also a breakthrough design. The 1965 Mustang, the first pony car, it created a whole genre of vehicles. And 86 Taurus, it changed Ford Motor Company and brought us into the future. And now I think that we're gonna see it again with the brand new Taurus that, that's happening right now. If there was ever a symbol of what to expect from the Ford Motor Company in the 21st century and the next generation of Ford vehicles, it has to be the Taurus of 2010. Design that is captivating, technologies that are awe-inspiring, driving dynamics that are simply thrilling, and value that's true to the Ford tradition. So the rebirth of the Taurus is just the most, one of the most exciting products that I've seen in, in my 45 years of being around the Ford Motor Company. Taurus was able to jump into a direction that it had never been before. It's going to be a flagship. It's going to be, you know, first and foremost, a beautiful car. And then it's going to be backed up by great technology. And the great technology is in the EcoBoost engine 
We were able to bring back the show, so you've got V8 power and zero to 60 speeds that beat a lot of the big V8s. With V6 fuel economy, you've got uh, radars that look 360 degrees around the car, forward-looking radars for adaptive cruise control and the ease and comfort of collision warning. You've got side-looking radars, let you know if somebody's in your blind spot. There's 10 class exclusive technologies in this vehicle and the list of technologies in this vehicle, even premium uh, luxury vehicles, don't have this list of technology. It's a hit. This one is a winner and I think we got that research right and we got the execution right. I guess we've taken a position that we don't have to compromise any of the attributes that are necessary for the customer to be satisfied. Quality, robustness, fuel economy, driving dynamics, none of those need to be sacrificed to provide absolutely great looking styling. That's the challenge, that's the, that's the fun of working at Ford right now, is making sure that we deliver both of those, that we deliver that head-turning designs on the road, and at the same time, we're delivering on all the other attributes that the customer is expecting. And I think that does set us apart, and I think that does give us an advantage. From its advanced styling to its world-class performance, the Taurus offers perhaps the best glimpse into the future strategy of Ford to build cars that deliver on the demands for quality, efficiency, safety, and value, but do so without drivers having to give up a piece of who they are. To make cars for people who love to drive, with styling that fires the heart. Taurus really is uh, an, an announcement that says, you're seeing it here on the Taurus first, but it's coming all the way across the car lineup. So if you go to our showrooms today, we have a fantastic lineup. And what I can say is, looking at this car and looking at the future, it's only going to get better. In addition to using their technological prowess in designing vehicles that excite and truly elevate the driving experience, at the heart of the Ford plan is the ever-increasing consumer and environmental imperative for fuel efficiency and long-term sustainability. Ford's commitment to the environment came long before any of the world's automotive companies even came into existence. Henry Ford, besides being an industrialist, was a committed conservationist devoted to finding ways to both protect and nurture the environment as well as harness nature itself as a clean and efficient energy source. From the earliest uses of zero emission hydroelectric power to recycling factory waste to reduce the fossil fuel burden on the public to experimentation with alternative fuels, Henry Ford's early pioneering led to breakthrough after breakthrough throughout the 20th century and an environmental consciousness at the Ford Motor Company that long preceded our present-day concern for the environment. Unknown to most, by the late 20th century and into the early years of this century, more than 90% of the alternative fuel vehicles sold in the world were produced by Ford. Well, sustainability is one of the real important parts of our business plan going forward because uh, you know, for us to be a successful company and serve our customers, we clearly have to make great products. But we also need to be creating a very strong business and people want to be associated with a business that is also contributing to a better world. And Ford is in such a great position that way because we have decided that we're going to be part of the solution, we're going to be part of the answer, we're going to be there with the most fuel efficient, highest quality, safest vehicles in the world so that that you not only get the vehicles you want, but you're also getting them with a, using the minimum amount of resources and contributing to a better world. The researchers and engineers at Ford are among the world leaders in the development of transportation that is sustainable, affordable, and practical. Alternative fuels of the future, second generation hybrids, pure battery electric powertrains, biofuel, and advanced hydrogen fuel cells. 
And what we've developed is um, what we call our sustainability bl blueprint. And it's really customer focused products that are as environmentally compatible as possible, helping us to be as, uh, a part of the solution for climate change, a part of the solution for energy security and independence, and also just what I'll call a part of the solution for employment security, uh, economic stability. And so we have a huge effort on our manufacturing facilities, how we run our plants around the world, very consistent standards, uh, how we do our paint systems, all of that, yes, that happens. The biggest impact is how we run our vehicles, the fuels we use, how little fuel we can use, and progressing that technology. With the Milan and Fusion hybrids, car and driver said, Ford has pulled off a game changer with this 2010 model, creating a high MPG family hauler that's fun to drive. Ford hit it over the fence and into the ionosphere. We picked our 10 All-Stars for 2010, and the number one vote-getting vehicle was a Fusion Hybrid. The Fusion Hybrid was the number one, and I should say it tied with a Porsche Cayman. We understand the need for alternative fuel. We understand the need for low emissions. But, you know, when this magazine, when Automobile Magazine was founded, the rallying cry was no boring cars. And we always said, that doesn't mean no cheap cars, no entry-level cars, no family cars. It means no boring cars. And the Fusion Hybrid was entertaining enough to make it our number one vote getter by our worldwide staff. Just look at the dash. It is about the most entertaining thing that pops up. It's like an iPod. It's no coincidence that Ford is hooking up in the, in the electronics industry and computer industry for their technology. Not only did Ford prove they can compete with the best cars in the world, the Ford Fusion went on to win the coveted 2010 Motor Trend Car of the Year Award. What's incredible to us uh, to see is that the plan is working right before our eyes and the press absolutely gets what we're trying to do here, building cars that people want, making fuel economy a reason to buy, and it's captured in the new Fusion. That's why we won Car of the Year. Motor Trend uh, editors looked at that product, looked at what's going on in the company, it was all included in that product, and that's why we won and we we're thrilled. As a team, there's nothing like winning and being acknowledged by the third party that you make the best midsize sedan because that is the core car market in the U.S. Customers absolutely demand fuel efficiency, but one of the biggest fears is they're gonna to have to give up the vehicle they really want. But Ford's interesting uh, perspective on this is we are not going to take the challenge of fuel efficiency which is really a customer want, and then kill all other customer wants at the same time by saying, it's only one small car. It's a little bubble car and that's all you get. Because it, we're gonna apply uh, smart, fuel efficient technologies, weight reduction strategies, uh, things we've only scratched the surface on, things the industry's only scratched the surface on, across a full range of products. And that was our commitment right from the beginning. But leading the world in sustainable transportation and inventing the next generation of technologically advanced alternative-fueled engines are only part of the story. At Ford, the commitment to the environment extends not just to the final vehicle, but to how that vehicle is built. Here, the story is revolutionary as well, and it too started in the imagination of the founder a century ago. This is the Ford Rouge Complex, nestled along the Rouge River in Dearborn, Michigan. Arguably, even today, the most famous manufacturing facility ever constructed, and still one of the largest industrial complexes in the world. The Rouge Assembly Complex today is not only an industrial miracle, but an environmental miracle that has and continues to be emulated by automotive manufacturers around the world the massive assembly facility is covered by one of the world's largest living roofs, a remarkable 10.4 acre field of drought resistant plants that collects and filters rain as part of an extensive natural storm water management system. 
It traps airborne industrial dust, absorbs carbon dioxide, and creates oxygen. Not only does it double the roof life, the sedum roof and living vines growing on the exterior walls warm the factory in winter and cool it in summer. Parking lots built with porous pavement purify runoff waters without chemicals as they feed into natural wetlands and vegetated swales. Optical angle solar panels turn sunlight into electricity. Energy efficient glass skylights flood the factory with natural light. A green gateway of sustainable landscaping abounds through the complex with over 20,000 trees and shrubs and 85,000 flowering perennials. And new systems are being added continuously, including such things as a fumes-to-fuel system that converts volatile paint fumes into hydrogen-rich gas to generate electricity. All a far cry from the rust belt image of the smoke-belching steel and concrete automobile factories of old. A far cry, too, from the factories of old is the assembly plant floor itself. A clean, cool, quiet, well-lit environment where empowered workers today build a variety of vehicles on the same line with consistently high quality. With state-of-the-art, lean and flexible manufacturing, assembly lines can handle multiple models, allowing the company to quickly change vehicles based on customer demand, all in a healthy, safe, and people-friendly environment that fosters continuous improvement and a genuine commitment to the highest quality standards. This commitment to sustainability is only a part of a broader plan that has redefined the entire mission of the Ford Motor Company in the 21st century. I live in Santa Monica, California, and my neighbors would come up to me and say, congratulations, I think it's great you're going to Ford. And then I'd say, are you going to buy a Ford? And they'd say, no. They had all this goodwill for the company, but they weren't consumers. They, didn't, they weren't going to shop the product. And our job at Ford is to build products that people want, and that's not enough, though. I then have to get them to be interested in the company as a whole so they give those products a chance. One thing that happened this year that was a game changer for us is not asking for government help. That was a huge enabler for people to start to look at us again, but it's still not going to be enough. Until we get enough people owning our newer products that have better quality than our competitors, that have better fuel economy, that are more fun to drive, until there are millions of those people on the road, uh, it's going to take time. But the one thing I've discovered at Ford is, once people do figure out that our products are better, it goes faster than we thought. I think it's because there's so much goodwill for the company. There's only one Ford. You know, there's only one Henry Ford. There's only one product like the Taurus. And I think it's going faster because of all that goodwill. We committed ourselves to delivering best in class products and services every time. And I think that the way to change perception is to be consistent over time. If you have vehicles that don't break, the customers know that. If you have vehicles that give you great fuel economy, they know that too. So I think that providing the great vehicles that customers want and love and delivering that over time will change the perception. It has been said that every vehicle that rolls off an American assembly line rolls straight into an automatic headwind of misperception. It is a misperception that pervades American consumers who all too often believe that the quality of American-made cars continues to lag behind that of imports. And, in fact, for several decades, American automotive manufacturers did struggle to close the quality gap with their imported competitors. The story is well known, and the impact has changed the face of the American automotive marketplace. And perception always trails reality. Uh, we saw that when the early Japanese cars here came, which weren't very high quality. Uh, they were inexpensive and they were pretty fuel efficient. That gave them the platform. 
Uh, the perception was that the domestics had better quality, uh, and that faded as the Japanese delivered and people began to accept the product. And the same thing is true in the other direction. The, the, the execution on products, and we drive many of the cars, and I don't care whether you're talking about Korean, Japanese, uh, European, uh, American, is just amazingly good. But that perception gap is still there. While the perception of import quality leadership still exists, the reality has been changing in recent years, and the quality gap between domestic and imported cars and trucks has been narrowing significantly. At the Ford Motor Company, this gap has been eliminated, and automotive experts everywhere are seeing the results as well. For its 2010 models, Ford won the most automotive excellence awards of any brand in history from the prestigious journal Popular Mechanics. RDA Group's global quality research system measures vehicle satisfaction in the first three months of ownership, the time when quality issues are most likely to surface. And indeed, Ford is now tied with Honda and Toyota. Personally, leading the quality efforts, I, I won't be satisfied until everywhere else in the world the Ford Motor Company distances itself and becomes the clear leader in, in quality around the world. At the heart of the Ford plan to re-engineer the driving dynamics of their cars, crossovers, and trucks is their groundbreaking development of smart technology and intelligent systems. The smart technology story is so extensive and so sophisticated that it affects virtually every aspect of the driving experience, from information to entertainment to safety to connecting the driver to the outside world as never before imagined. I think I've got 10 microprocessors on this car, and thank you Silicon Valley, but now what we're able to control from the fuel efficiency and the way we control an engine which nobody sees to the way we control the nav screen and the radio, and we let you save songs that you've heard on the radio, uh, that's really directly customer interfaced. Uh, it's really a dynamic industry that takes the best of technologies from around the world and puts them uh, you know, right at your fingertip. You know, we are not the smokestack industry and we're global and we are very much cutting edge technology. Ford Sync is an advanced software platform that provides consumers the convenience and flexibility to bring digital media players and Bluetooth enabled mobile phones into their vehicles and operate the devices via voice commands. And when married with Sirius satellite radio, it opens up the world to the driver. With features ranging from a sophisticated navigation system with turn-by-turn -turn directions and accident bypass to voice-activated Bluetooth hands-free calling. And with Sirius Travel Link, drivers can call forth real-time traffic conditions, current and forecasted weather, lowest fuel prices, even sports scores, movie listings, personalized business data, all with 130 satellite radio stations and a voice-activated premium music system that can store up to 2,400 of your favorite songs. Along with the explosion in technology and new products is a revolution in communicating and building a genuine relationship with the new car buyers of today, many of whom, especially younger buyers, are reluctant to even consider an American car. There's no better example than with the upcoming American introduction of the new world car, the Ford Fiesta. I'll never forget the first day, uh, first couple days I joined Ford. I went over to the test center. I'm inside. This is a place where the first Thunderbird got tested and the first Mustang. And, you know, my grandfather was the 380th employee for the company. I mean, this is very special for me to go to this place. And I got to drive a Fiesta that was, at that time, two years ago, completely camouflaged. And, and Derek just said, just try it. Tell me what you think. You know, I, I've been testing and driving cars for 20 years at Toyota. When I got out of that car, I had never driven a small car that had that kind of low-end torque 
and that was that tossable as a front wheel drive car. I had not been in anything like that before. At that moment I knew we had something really special. And since we get to reinvent our car line from scratch, we got to bring something to the market that isn't really there today. What I drove that day in November two years ago was the DNA for the new Ford. Fun to drive, super fuel efficient, low end torque, take technology that only was in luxury cars or sports cars and bring it down to every man and woman. And I think that was the early promise that companies like Honda made, but then they moved away from that. In our passenger cars, that's what the media is starting to fall in love with because they haven't felt it in a long time. Fiesta launched in Europe to rave reviews from owners and the worldwide automotive press and will land in America in 2010. In preparation, Ford made a daring decision to bring in 125 European-built Fiestas and put them in the hands of consumers, young, discriminating buyers, no holds barred, free thinkers all with extensive social media networks of their own. Letting the chips fall where they may, the driver's only requirement was to post their Fiesta experiences, good, bad, or indifferent, on their social networks, Flickr, Twitter, YouTube, or whatever. And what a groundswell developed. The excitement for Fiesta has been so overwhelming, it's given birth to a genuine movement, the Fiesta movement. And literally, good or bad, however, whatever they did, they were able to post it. So I think for Ford, it was a big step for us because, um, one, it showed that we really had confidence in this uh, fresh new product, and two, we you know, earned the credibility and authenticity of not trying to filter what people were really going to say about the product. The things that uh, customers share about it, I think, are really deemed real and authentic. I mean, we get people talking about uh, how much they love anything from the cup holder to the technology that's in the vehicle. They're surprised by how fun to drive a small car is. People who drive it around get stopped on the street each and every day, uh, asked to, you know, what is this? And it really is surprising and different from Ford. So the reception's just been outstanding. Even more important than using technology to keep drivers informed and connected is using that very technology to help protect drivers and to help protect the most precious cargo they will ever carry. We set forth to say we want to go after safety, not just to meet the laws, but also to go above and beyond to our more stringent internal standards. The Ford Motor Company has earned more five-star crash test ratings and top safety pick awards than anyone else in the entire industry, domestic and foreign. But that's only the beginning. One of the biggest obstacles to overcome is driver distraction, the cause of nearly 80% of all accidents. Ford scientifically tests these circumstances through the use of their industry-leading driving simulator called Vertex, which stands for Virtual Test Track Experiment. Vertex is the only full motion driving simulator operated by an automobile company in North America and is one of the most advanced laboratories in the world for studying driver behavior. Learning the effects of driver distraction and how to overcome these circumstances has shaped cutting edge technologies to help drivers avoid dangerous crash situations with radar, camera, and ultrasonic sensors to detect objects and give the driver visual and audio alerts. Ford continues to pioneer the safety effort with a particular focus on younger drivers, who statistically are the most at risk to get into an accident. Ford's answer is the MyKey technology, a revolutionary safety feature designed to control vehicle characteristics and performance to promote safe driving habits among new drivers. Just take one of the two standard keys that come with the vehicle, put it in the ignition, go into 
the message center menu and turn on the my key mode. Then hand that key to your teenager and every time thereafter when that key is being used, you're not buckled up, the radio won't work. It will limit the maximum volume of the radio, it will limit the maximum speed of the vehicle. When your son or daughter have demonstrated excellent uh, driving behaviors, you can then turn the system back off and have two full function keys. The Ford Motor Company safety engineers continue their tireless pursuit to keep families safe with yet another industry first. Ford is introducing the auto industry's first ever production inflatable safety belts which are designed to provide additional protection for rear seat occupants, often children and older passengers, who can be more vulnerable in the event of an accident. Ford's work on safety is never routine. Every person who touches this area understands that the dynamic work they do and every obstacle and challenge they overcome may help save lives. The great economic collapse of this decade severely affected every individual and institution in America. To be sure, it brought the automotive industry to its knees. Many across the country were more than willing to let the American automobile industry die, a decaying rust belt relic of days gone by. They had little sympathy for the city that became the automotive capital of the world in the 20th century, or the industry in that city that put the world on wheels that was the engine of the American Industrial Revolution, was the arsenal of democracy during the World Wars, that raised the standard of living and quality of life of all Americans. Many were perfectly willing to abdicate the powerful manufacturing base that made America great, convinced that the bastion of innovation and technological leadership had somehow been lost to other players on the world stage. One American institution, however, is proving that nothing could be further from the truth. Having braved the perfect storm, the Ford Motor Company, on its own, is today re-emerging as a new leader in global automotive research and innovation, and in the way it is delivering its vehicles to people of all ages and lifestyles. The cars, the crossovers, and the trucks coming out today are setting a new world standard those just over the horizon are unlike anything the world has ever seen. But even more importantly, there is a new beat in the step of the men and women of this great American company, a new energy and excitement that permeates the culture of Ford and is based on a simple realization that something very special is happening there. It's happening in their workers, it's happening in their Lincoln, Mercury, and Ford dealers across the country. It's an energy and excitement driven by the new pioneers leading this company and born in the knowledge that their purpose is not only to provide the world with great products, but to play a bigger role, a role in building a better America and a better world, in enhancing the human condition, in leaving a legacy for our children and our children's children.